Hello and welcome to another episode of Waffle TV. My name is Jimmy and I'm here with some of the cast and the director of the very famous Train Spotting. Uh, we're coming to you live from the actual Train Spotting set. Hello guys, how are we doing today? Good. Good, yeah, yeah. all good. good. Hello, good. hello. Um, fantastic. Now, um, for those people who have been living under a rock, can one of you maybe tell me a wee bit about what Train Spotting is? Who wants to go? Gavin, I'm coming to you. <laughs> train Spotting is... Um, a very famous novel by the Edinburgh writer, author, Irvin Welsh. Mm -hmm. And of course it was adapted later on to be a very famous and iconic piece of film. Um, but what very few people know is before the film, um, there was the play, mm -hmm. which was based on the book. And then the film was sort of based on the play and the book. And it just didn't get as much exposure, but it's known to be like quite a harrowing piece of writing. And the way we're playing it now, almost 22 years after its uh, conception, is a more immersive style mm -hmm. where the audience are involved more, whether they like it or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah I think in your face later, it's pretty much it's different from anything you've probably seen before, is that right? Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rachel, do you want to tell us a wee bit about the kind of history of this production? Because you've been in it for a while. Well, it all started in December 2013. And so apart from two members, we are all the original December 2013 cast mm -hmm. and when we first did it it was in a big hall in Leith and we had moving walls and we did the full play which mm -hmm. was two and a half hours long well. so we've managed to <laughs> cut that down for the fringe because no one wants to sit through a two and a half hour production but after that we then managed to take it to the fringe last year and we all put our own money in to be able to do it and then amazingly Adam here from the King's Head mm -hmm. um, agreed to bring us to London just in March to April there, yeah. which was amazing. It was our first proper professional contract for a lot of us, a London debut. And then from there, it's just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And the King said have amazingly managed to get us here at Assembly, uh -huh. which has been amazing. Yeah. And yeah, it's just getting bigger and better. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's probably one of the only site specific venues at the fringe. It's so hard to do to get your yeah. own devoted space. Do you know what I mean? So you're very yeah, they literally there. built it for us. Yeah. Like, the walls here didn't exist and it is a functioning car park for yeah. the uni so yeah. everyone's a bit like mind blown when they come in and see that we've actually made it into a great little yeah. theatre. It's all part of it and it's yeah. all part of it. Amazing. And Adam, do you kind of want to tell the viewers kind of what they would expect from this train spotting? Uh, hi viewers. Um, <laughs> sure. Well, uh, I think, you know, uh, Gavin, Gavin said it himself, it's an immersive production. Um, the original In Your Face production was more promenade because it was in a long hall and, and they weren't able to have sets or lights. And so it was very much an organic piece where the performers were holding their, their own lights and moving from space to space. And when we moved it to the King's Head, the King's Head's not big enough to do that. Um, so we kind of, <clears throat> in, a, in, in a couple of days, turned it inside out and made it an immersive piece of theater. So all the work that the company had done on character was still there. We just looked more at the dramaturgy of the piece, so that is going from moment to moment and telling the story. The experience of coming to see this show in Edinburgh is, I'd, I'd say, unique. I don't know if it's the only site-specific piece at the Fringe, but um, it's a unique experience walking down a long hall, swapping your ticket for a glow stick, getting a nightclub stamp on your way in, and you don't sit down in your seat when you arrive. You, you, you have to rave for about 15 <laughs> minutes to the kind of music that you can't actually hear each other speak over. Yeah. I remember setting the sound um, during the tech for this season, and if I could ask you how you are and you could hear me, then it wasn't loud enough right. kind of thing. So, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I'm inspired to do that kind of work by the company because everything they go for is verismo. It's realism. It has to be you know, as real as possible. Yeah. Um, uh, and that, I guess that's what you can expect, yeah. is that... Someone who came to see the show last night said, um, Adam, you know, don't worry about the film. This redefines the story. And that, and, that, and that was a really great compliment because, of course, the film is fantastic. But the film is, f as beautiful as it is, frozen in, in time, whereas the art of theatre is live and it's based on communion. So, you know, the audience have to be here for us to play. And we, there has to be engagement and penetration, if you like, between... The, the two parties, and normally in, in an end-on proscenium arch theatre, it's quite passive, where, whereas this style of theatre, uh, it's not. You know, you, you, are, you determine the piece, mm -hmm. and no show, therefore, can ever be the same. 
actually, on the contrary, they're always quite different because depending on who's in the space and, and who is part of the show, yeah. because quite often throughout the piece, people become characters in the piece, yeah. you know, um, whether they like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I, that, that's what you can expect. Um, and Gavin, can you kind of tell us a bit about the reception that you've had? Because I know, obviously, this product has seen many great reviews. What about here at the Fringe so far? Oh, How's it been going? It's been overwhelming. Yeah. It really has. It's literally two years of not only mine, but everyone has been involved. Like, it's a life, you know. We put our heart and souls into this. Put a lot of money in it as well. Yeah. But, you know, like, it's just great. It's finally getting the reception it deserves. Yeah. And it all started when Adam took us down to London. Yeah. It's just we're just kind of like riding that wave right now. I mean, it's just like sellout show after sellout show yeah. after sellout show. It's just been like yeah. crazy, absolutely crazy. And like people are stopping me in the street. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, you're in train spot, and it was absolutely amazing. It blew my mind, yeah. and I was just like, oh, thanks yeah. for coming. <laughs> along, you know, it's like it's, it's really a bizarre situation to yeah. for me to find myself in, I suppose. But yeah. I mean, I'm just. I'll pump my feet leafy, that's, like, that's me. That's it. That's it. Just like renting. Uh, <laughs> you know, typecast. Um, and Rich, can you tell us a bit about what's going to be happening next for the show? Well, there are some plans in motion. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say mm -hmm. right now. We do we definitely, <laughs> we do definitely uh, have a tour to Birmingham confirmed, and that'll be m like end of March to April time. Yep. And there are some other things that will be released, no doubt, very yes, soon. Um, there's vague rumours of the show going to uh, Brighton and also a return London season. Amazing. Yeah, but these are just rumours that I've heard on the grapevine. Yeah. yeah. You never know. Yeah. You never know. But watch this space. Amazing. And then can you just tell us exactly where and when uh, we can find this train spotting? Uh, you can find it at Assembly Underground from we are running every day apart from Tuesdays to the 31st of August with shows at 6 o'clock and half past eight, with the possibility of late shows mm -hmm. at quarter to 11. Amazing, and yeah. really get your tickets now because it's yeah. selling out. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. it was Black Wednesday yesterday yeah. for the Fringe and we were sold out, which is amazing. Absolutely. So buy tickets, yes. come Good see us. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Thank you so, so much guys. It's been great speaking to you. Um, it's been another episode of Waffle TV sponsored by Bowmers.